Hey guys, welcome to this second lesson in the spherical geometry uh, unit of the General 2 HSC Maths course. We'll be looking at today at looking at distances along great circles. If you haven't looked at the first introduction lesson, please do so. Um, it certainly gives you a bit of a background knowledge. Last lesson we looked at the things to do with our lines of longitude, which would be those ones there, and our uh, equator and our latitude lines. Now, we also spoke about what a great circle was, and that a great circle went all the way around um, the center, I guess, of the circle, and looking at the, the poles. So, obviously, our east and west poles and our north and south poles. Now, in terms of our, our longitude lines, all lines of longitude are going to be great circles because they all go through the north and south pole. However, our latitude lines, there's only one great circle that goes through the east and west poles, and that would be the equator. As you can see, that green one above, that gets smaller. So what we'll be doing is looking at find the distance. And we mentioned this last lesson, that if you look at, I guess, um, point A here and point B, along the great circle, which would be that length there, the distance between them, creates with the radiuses from the center of the Earth a sector. And the formula for the arc length of a sector is theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Now the reason why we can only do this with the great circles is if you looked at a smaller latitude circle like that, obviously the radius from the center of that would be slightly different to the radius at the center. So that's why we will only be finding distances along the great circles, which the latitude will be the equator, or our lines of longitude. So, we are going to be uh, as I said, using this formula and applying it. Now, most of the time, this formula is pretty easy. As mentioned last lesson, that the radius will always be given as 6,400 kilometers, unless, I guess, otherwise stated. But we take it always as 6,400 kilometers. Even if it doesn't say 6,400, we take it as 6,400. Which means, I guess, for these questions, the only difference will be finding our theta. I say that uh, you know that's um, the only thing we have to do, but that can get a little bit uh, difficult sometimes. So I'm going to just draw a quick diagram, I guess, underneath here. Um, actually, I might do it above. Um, we're going to just draw a quick diagram of the Earth. And just because I want to show you what sort of happens. Now, that's my equator line, which is going to be... Um, zero degrees, that's going to be my, oh, that's really weird, isn't it? Apologies there. That's going to be my um, Greenwich Meridian, and that makes that the zero degrees line. That's quite important, because that's my starting point. Now, let's say, for example, that we have um, like A, which is at the Greenwich Meridian, and we're looking at a point B that, let's say, has a longitude line of, let's say, that's going to be 50 degrees east. Obviously, because it's to the right-hand side of the um, of the Greenwich Meridian. Now, if I split that up like that, we've got our sector. You can see that that's my arc length. If I was trying to find my arc length, well, we know the formula says theta over 360 times 2 pi times our radius, and our radius will be 6,400 kilometers. So what will be my theta? Well, if this is zero degrees and we know that it's traveled to that line, it's called the 50 degrees east line because that's 50 degrees in between. So all of a sudden I can say that my angle will be 50 degrees out of 360 times 2 pi times 6,400 and we calculate our answer. Pretty straightforward. But what happens if I want to find the distance from, let's say, point B to another line. Let's say I'm going to draw another line there. Let's call that the 70 degrees east line, and we'll call that point C. So what if I want to now find this one here, which means if I draw my kind of sector here, I'm looking for that section inside there. What would change from what you've just done? Well, the rule will still be the same. It's still going to be theta over 360 times 2 pi times r, which is the 6400. Now, I guess if you're looking at the angles, to b we already know that's 50 degrees. 
But if I want to look to C, we know that that's the 70 degree east line. So all the way around there will be 70 degrees. Which means if that's 70 degrees there, a bit hard to see, apologies, that's 70 degrees there, what would be left in that little part of the angle there? Remember, that's the 50 and that's the 70. Well, hopefully you recognize that would be 20 degrees. And I'll put that over 360 times 2 pi times 6400. Okay, and that's the only sort of difference. Now, in that case, they're all both east. So if they're both east, what we always do, we subtract. Likewise, if they're both west, to get the difference, we need to subtract. Now what happens if I choose a, a point D, let's call it right on this line here, and let's call that 100 degrees west line, because at zero, we've gone west. What would the, dif the distance between, let's call it D, A, actually not A, sorry, my apologies, we'll go um, B and D, which means now, I'm running out of colors here, I'm looking for the distance all the way around here. Now we know that that's 50 degrees to get to B, but now it's 100 degrees to get to west, so that's now going to be 150 degrees over 360 times 2 pi times 6400. If you have one that's east and one's west, that is, they are different angles, then you will add those angles together. Okay, so I guess what we're coming out with is those two sort of rules there, that if they're the same side, so both east or both west, to get the difference in the angles, we would subtract them. If they're one's east and one's west, that means they're different, then we would have to add those angles together. Once we've got those, everything else is the same. So that's can get a little bit complicated to start with, but trust me, guys, it gets a lot easier the more you do. So let's have a look at a question. Tokyo is located at 35 degrees north, 139 degrees east, and Adelaide is located at 34 degrees south, 139 degrees east. Now, what I'm going to do, you don't need to do this each time, but I'm going to do it just for this time. I'm going to explain to you, sort of looking at our map, our Earth, that's again our point of origin, so our equator line and our Greenwich Meridian line, our prime meridian line. And I'm going to draw in 139 degrees east longitude line. Now, m notice that they both have that longitude line because they both sit on that line, that great circle. But they have different locations for, um, for the north and for the south. Okay, so that means that one is sitting on this latitude line, which is 35 degrees north. So let's say he's sitting on here. And we've got one sitting on a south latitude line of 34 degrees south. So what we've kind of got is that sector there. So let's have a look. If I look at that's my equator line, that's my, that's my radius, we've got 35 degrees north, we've got 34 degrees south. How would you find the angle sitting in between them? Well, hopefully you recognize that one's north and one's south, therefore the angle would equal 35 plus 34, which would equal 69 degrees. Now once I've got that, it should be straight. Length equals 69 over 360 times 2 pi times the 6400. And now it becomes a matter of just putting that into our calculator and letting it do its magic. I'm just doing mine as we speak. Now most of these questions, folks, it will be to the nearest kilometre. So we've got 7,707 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. The next question says, oh, sorry, I've actually answered both questions. The first one said, what is the angular distance? Well, we did that in the first instance. That's part A, that was a 69 degrees. And part B was our length of 7707. So you can see it works for the same thing where you're just trying to recognize which of the two numbers that I'm using. Are they going to be, is it the north and south line or is it the east-east line? 
Well, if I try to use the east and east line, well, they're both east, you need to subtract. 139 minus 139, that's zero. That's not going to work. It means we haven't moved anywhere. So hopefully you'll recognize that it's pretty easy to see which of the two values you're using and then work out am I adding them together to get the angle angular distance or am I subtracting them once again if they're the same so they're both east or west we subtract the angles but like this example if they're different that means one's east and one's west then we add the angles together. And if you're not sure, just draw it out like I did. Okay, let's have a look at another one. We've got the points M and N are on the surface. Now this time, I'm not going to use a diagram. So we've got 20 degrees south, 50 degrees east, 60 degrees south, 50 degrees east. Well, you should recognize that the line that they're both on are the same longitude line which is the east line. So I am going to be looking at using the other two values. They're the different ones. Now, are they the same or are they different in terms of north-south? Well, they're the same, which means I'm going to subtract the values to get a difference of 40 degrees. That's part A. And now part B, to get my angular distance, it's just 40 over 360 times 2 pi times my radius of 6400 and it's a simple matter now of putting that one into our calculator so 40 over 360 times 2 pi times 6400 once again it's going to be to the nearest kilometer so we've got 4468 kilometers once again if you weren't sure you could sort of draw it out um, when I'm always drawing mine I always draw my equator and my prime meridian line and I label that as zero degrees my point of origin and in this case they're both on the 50 degrees east line so that's 50 degrees east which doesn't really matter too much but they're both north so you can see that one was um, so both south one was 20 degrees south and one was a little bit further down so if I'm looking at the uh, the, the difference in the angles Okay, we're looking at one take away the other, and that was how we got the 60 take away the 20 to get the 40 degrees. Um, look, I hope that made a bit of sense. Again, I know it's getting towards 15 minutes. I don't like to have um, them all that long. I do want to just go through one last thing. Okay, my apologies. I'm just trying to get a new, a fresh page up. I was going to give you a different question, but I want to look at this one last type of question. Let's say we've got the point, my apologies, Let's say I've got the point A, which is at uh, 60 degrees um, north. And I've got, uh, let's say, the 30 degrees east line. And actually, my apologies, guys. My apologies, my apologies. I'm going to put it at 0 degrees. And then I'm going to do... 180, oh, sorry, 180, my bad, 160 degrees east, and I'm going to do B on the great circle, zero degrees, and we're going to do 70 degrees west. I just want to look at this. Now, they will often say to find the shortest distance. Now, I don't see this question too often, but I want to make a point of it. Let's say I've got my my globe, I'm going to whack on my equator line of zero degrees north south. I'm going to put on my line there for zero degrees, which is going to be my uh, prime meridian. So I've got my point of origin, point of origin. So I've got my starting point. Now, if I draw my lines in, we've got one that's 70 degrees west over here. So that's 70 degrees west. And I've got one that's 160 degrees east, which means it's almost on the other side of my... It's kind of like over there somewhere. All right, it's on the other side there. It's nearly completely the other way around, like 180 degrees, nearly. And it's asking me from point A to point B, if I just continue that uh, equator line, it's asking that point B over there 
to find the distance all the way around. All the way around. All the way around. Now, it does say the shortest distance. I wonder why it says the shortest. Well, hopefully you recognize that if I'm trying to go from A to B on a plane, there's going to be two ways of doing that if, of course, I'm following my great circle line. I could go to the right, so to the east, all the way around and get there. Or, alternatively, I could also go west and go that way instead. They're both going to get me to point B. So this brings up the idea of the shortest distance. Now, if I go by my rule and say, okay, well, one's east and one's west, I'm going to plus those together. We're going to get 230 degrees from those two points. I guess if I make my sector, that's 230 degrees there. But you might say, oh, hold on, that's a reflex angle. What if... I went the other way around and found my angle on the other side, which would be doing 360 take away 230, which would leave me with 130 degrees, which is clearly a smaller sector. If you look at it like that, 130 degrees is smaller, which means that distance there will be smaller than all the other side. So this is a much more challenging question, but the only harder part is getting that 130 degrees. Once you've got that, I'm just doing 130 over 360 times 2 pi times um, the 6400. I would then uh, place that into my calculator and then times it by 2 pi times 6400. And to the nearest uh, kilometer, as we've done for the previous questions, it would be uh, 14521 kilometers. Um, again, with that question, it's a two mark question most likely. One mark for getting the angle and one mark for getting your length. In any case, if you use the 230 and found the longer distance, you still get one out of two. It would just be, it wouldn't be the shortest distance, it'd be the longest distance. Look, that's a little bit confusing. I, really, I do understand that, folks, but I'm mindful of the time. Um, please have a crack at some of these questions. Just remember the two steps. The first is you're finding the angular distance. So if they are the same, so they're both east or they're both west, we're going to minus or subtract to get the angle, angle that's in between. But if they're the same, uh, so if they're different, of course, that's one's east, one's west. We're going to add those to get the actual angle. There is that case, of course, that if the angle's above 180 degrees, it is actually quicker or less distance to go the other way around. We can then take it away from 360. But of course, that's, a, that's sort of further down the track. Hope this made sense, guys. Have an awesome day. Let me know if you need any more help.